Hi there, it's Rob from Octopus. Welcome to Octopus Deployed 2018.8. This month, our headline feature is Supercharged Custom Scripts. We've enhanced our Custom Script step to unlock some incredible scenarios, like working with Docker Compose easily and publishing Docker images to Amazon Container Services. This is all made possible by adding support to work with one or more packages from a custom script within a deployment process. This is a subtle change, but it has a big impact. We're also shipping an alpha of our new Kubernetes support, which is extremely exciting. Since this is an early release, we won't be taking a look at it today, but we'll be walking through it very soon. Now, let's get started. I have an Octopus Cloud instance running with a single project group and a demo project. It's called Docker Compose Demo, and we're gonna walk through this example. We have two environments staging in production, and you can see I've already done a couple deployments. I'd like to take a look at our infrastructure to see what we're deploying to. As I mentioned, we have two environments staging in production, and we have a single SSH deployment target. If we take a look at it, you can see it is scoped to both staging and production, and it's an Ubuntu Linux VM acting as our Docker host. This is running in Amazon Web Services, and we're authenticating with an SSH key pair. Now, if we head over to our project, we can take a look at our deployment process. This is our deployment process, and you can see it's fairly simple. The first step is really doing all the work, and the second step simply is doing a test just to make sure things are up and running. Both of these steps are custom script steps, and the first one is taking advantage of a lot of the new features that have been added. It's calling Docker Compose to start up a web app service. Let's dig into it. One of the first things you can see is our execution plan, and this step will run against all of our targets with the Docker host role. If we take a look at the script details, I'd like to highlight some changes in this step from previous versions. The first is that there's now additional packages. You could always reference a script file in a package, but you couldn't reference additional packages. And this unlocks some really interesting scenarios, as we'll see shortly. The other thing is that I've turned on substitute variables and files. So if you click configure features, you can now take advantage of any of our configuration variable updating support. And in this case, I'm using substitute variables and files. In this case, I'm executing a script file contained within a package, but I'm also leveraging our infrastructure as code support to execute a script stored within a public GitHub repository. Now, I'm also referencing an additional package step. In this case, I'm referencing a very simple web server. It's HTTP Echo, which is a sample project from HashiCorp, and this is using a Docker Hub feed. If we take a look at our Docker Compose GitHub repository, we can understand how everything works. This is a fairly simple example, but the focus isn't on Docker Compose. It's on how to use our new script steps to work with Docker Compose. I'd like to point out a few of the files listed here. The most obvious is our Docker Compose YAML configuration file, as well as the .env file, which is a flat file of all our environment variables used when we start our container. If we take a look at these files, there are a few things of interest. The first one in our Docker Compose YAML configuration file, you can see we're specifying an image. This is enabled by the package support of the new custom script steps. If we look at the .env file, we can see it's a simple collection of key value pairs. If we jump back to the repository, and now if we take a look at the octopus.env file and this bash script, octopus.startup, the one thing you can see here, this is octopus.env, it's the same list of key value pairs, the environment variables we're setting, and you can see they're all parameterized, and the new script step easily does variable substitution on these, so we get the right variables from Octopus at deployment time. The final file I'd like to take a look at is the bash script. Now, all this file really is doing is calling docker-compose-up. 
But the other thing that it is doing is it's replacing the .env file with the octopus.env file. So at deployment time, that will have all the updated environment variables for the appropriate environment that we're deploying to. Now, if we jump back to Octopus, so you can see the new package support just works great to enable working with Docker Compose. And there's a lot of other scenarios you can work with thanks to this new support. If we jump back to our deployment process, we can take a quick look at our second step. Our second step, it's more just out of convenience. So what we're doing here is just running a very simple script just to connect to the endpoint that we've deployed to and echo the contents at the URL. So super simple, but it's a nice test and it'll write the output of this step to our log file so we can see it nice and easy. Now let's see things in action and execute a deployment. You can see that I've already deployed my latest release, version 0.1.0, .0 to the staging environment. Now I'd like to promote that to production. So I'm just going to click the deploy button. I'm going to review the options. Yes, I'm deploying to prod now and everything else is fine. So I'll click deploy and we'll kick things off. So our deployment was successful. If we take a look at our task log and expand step two, which was echo fin server, we can see a nice message there. So hello production from release 0.1.0. So everything worked great. If we navigate to our production URL, I've just set that up in the project description. We can see the exact same output. So things are working great. I'd like to summarize what we've seen today. Octopus 2018.8 introduces supercharged custom scripts, and we walked through an example that used them. What made them supercharged? There's a few key points. First, support for multiple packages. We were able to execute a custom script in one package, in this case, a GitHub repository, as well as reference another package. In this case, it was the Echo HTTP web server Docker image. Second, configuration updates. We were able to update our configuration files with Octopus variables scoped to our environment. So our configuration is perfect on every deployment. We use Docker Compose in our example today, but there are numerous other scenarios this unlocks, and we can't wait for our customers to start taking advantage of it. Thanks for watching. Links for all the resources used in this video are in the description below, including a link to start a free trial of Octopus Deploy. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our channel as we're adding new videos weekly. Happy deployments.